Welcome to the eighth and final episode of the Island's Explorer Notes. Today we'll be finishing off the second half of Helena's writings. Scorched Earth will begin very soon, so if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. I also will be doing a summary and lore explanation for the island, so keep an eye out for that. Finally, what do you guys want to see on this channel? I'd love to hear your suggestions in the comment section. This could range anywhere from more lore to whatever else you want to see from me. So, thanks for listening, and without further ado, enjoy Survivor. I suppose it was a bit naive of me to think that someone with the moniker of Beast Queen would roll out the red carpet. I guess I got used to all the friendly treatment that being an associate of Rockwell's earned me. She did let me stay, at least, and she hasn't instructed her dinosaurs to kill me yet, so that's a positive. Not that she'd really need the dinosaurs. If that glare of hers gets any more intense, I'll probably just burst into flames on the spot. Struth, I hope she eases up. Sifting through raptor excrement with someone watching is harder than you might think. There's nothing special about the diet of these tame creatures when compared to their wild counterparts. Part of that is the Beast Queen's doing, as she takes them on regular hunting excursions for training purposes. Curiously, they never have to range too far. There's an abundance of prey nearby, despite the size of her pack. That this is held true, regardless of her domesticated creature's remarkable birth and growth rates, make me think it even more unusual. Oh, and I did finally get her name, Lee Mei Yin. She's gotten a little less glary, too. In hindsight, maybe starting by studying her animal's feces just gave her the wrong impression. The most interesting thing that I've observed about Mei Yin's animals has been what they don't do. They never fight. Among creatures that have been domesticated for generations like cats or dogs, that's normal. But there's a reason zoos keep their animals in separate enclosures. Certain instincts are hard to curb, and there should definitely be more disputes among such a diverse group. Mei Yin has even integrated a herd of herbivores into her army, as their thick hides have proven resistant to fire and explosives. Yet despite being surrounded by carnivores, they remain untouched. It doesn't make sense. That's not to take anything away from Mei Yin. She works hard to treat and train her animals well. She's not bad company either. At least when she's not mute and I don't go full biologist. Sometimes it's felt like speaking a new language, but it's been kind of refreshing. After going over my notes from Mei Yin's camp, I've concluded that the animals on the island are not only used to humans, but used to captivity. Even with their accelerated growth rates, their behavior indicates that they have been regularly domesticated for decades at least. Otherwise, they'd never obey the whims of mankind so easily. With that in mind, I believe that my theory about this island being curated is back in play. In fact, it's possible that not only are animal populations being controlled, but that the animals themselves are genetically modified. However, before I bring this to Rockwell, there's one more rumor that I want to confirm. This is the smoking gun. It has to be. I simply can't be convinced that this place is natural after finding an island populated entirely by carnivores. Even if they fed off of each other, which is awfully dubious given that carnivore meat is much more likely to carry harmful parasites than herbivore meat, the landmass is so small and their population is so dense that they could never maintain it. Yet, there it is. Hidden away off the northeast coast of the island, someone could have put them there on purpose. There's no way that Rockwell can deny my theory now. As I expected, Rockwell couldn't deny my theory, but I can't say that I have his endorsement either. He didn't seem terribly engrossed in the subject, frankly. Something else seems to have captured his attention as of late. The island's obelisks. Apparently, Rockwell stumbled upon a way to interact with the towering monuments while spelunking, of all things. I guess he felt the need to scratch that old intrepid explorer itch of his. It's pretty impressive considering his age. Now that I think about it, the obelisks could be linked to my own findings. Their nature has always been a mystery, and Rockwell made some intriguing observations. I should follow up. Though I've been received by the Iron Brotherhood, they didn't seem very pleased to see me. Especially when I mentioned Rockwell. That's a first. Add that to the rather deserted, gloomy state of their compound, and I'm starting to feel a bit apprehensive. Their leader can't return from his hunting expedition soon enough. All I've confirmed so far is yes, they gathered all of the artifacts Rockwell sought, and yes, the artifacts were able to activate one of the obelisks. You'd think they'd be celebrating such a monumental discovery, but it's just killjoys as far as the eye can see. Go figure. I keep glancing at the artifact. I understand why the Iron Brotherhood's leader didn't want it. Since it has no apparent use, 
All it does is remind him of the tribesmen who died seizing it from the giant spider. Can it really be useless, though? They described the artifacts that activated the obelisk as looking similar to it, so I headed to the nearest obelisk to see if I could get a response. No luck. Maybe it activates something else. Of course! The platform in the cave! It's a long shot, but it's the only thing I can think of that's similar to the obelisks. Definitely worth a try. Unbelievable! The artifact perfectly fits one of the slots in the platform's pedestal. How did I not notice that right away? I really am a dipstick. So, if this key, such as it is, was acquired by activating one of the obelisks, then it follows that the other two keys can be obtained by activating the other two obelisks. Then, with all three keys, maybe this platform will lead to whatever is controlling the island's ecosystem. If the other obelisks work the way that the first one did, that means I have to find a whole mess of artifacts first, and I don't think I can do that alone. Well, the Howling Wolves are quickly tracking down the artifacts, but after hearing about what happened to the Iron Brotherhood, that's as far as they'll go. It's understandable, but it leaves me in a tight spot. If a giant spider and I get in a scrap, then the spider's winning for sure. Even with Athena on my side, I prefer to avoid danger, not confront it. My aim's piss poor, and I've got fists like marshmallows. If I want a fair go of actually surviving whatever happens when the obelisk activates, I'll need backup. Negotiation notes. Don't mention feces. Don't look directly at the glare. Bring chili. Unburned. Now, I know you don't get a name like Beast Queen without being one tough lady, but when I saw that giant ape, I still thought we were buggered. Fortunately, Mei Yin's got more intestinal fortitude than yours truly, and somehow, some way, she was able to pull out a win. Glad I'm on her good side. I already found the second key, but I want to take a look around here before we head back through the portal. This ape either lived here, or was released when we activated the obelisk. Finding out how it survived in this isolated environment, or how it got here, could prove useful. So, these are the conquerors that I've heard about way back when. Not a great first impression. Mayan and I weren't quite mates, but watching her creatures get slaughtered like that certainly wasn't pleasant. I'm not a fan of the prisoner lifestyle either. The leader introduced himself as Gaius Marcellus Nerva, and he's not a complete bogan, I'll give him that. He let me keep my personal effects, and our conversations have been civil so far. I get the feeling that'll change if I don't cooperate, though. Not that I have much choice, they already took both keys. The only way I'm seeing this through is as a guest of the new Legion. This Nerva bloke's Fig Jam Incarnate. He seems to think that he's Jupiter's gift to the island or some rubbish like that. I think his ego was actually tangible when the Legion returned from the obelisk with the third key, and the head of a dragon in tow. Sadly, as much as I would enjoy seeing him fall flat on his face, I need him, and I need the new Legion. So, when he asked me to guide his forces to the hidden cave, I obliged without protest. What he'll do with me afterwards, I don't know. When Nerva and his band return from the cave, they'll decide my fate. So, this may be my final chance to reflect. I may as well take advantage of it. I realized that had I just ignored the signs and accepted this paradise at face value, I'd still be happy and free. Would that have been better? I don't think so. After a lot of thought, I've decided that I'd rather die seeking the truth than living in an illusion. That, as Rockwell would say, is the path of a true scientist. Not that I'm Galileo battling the church or anything, but hey, it's something to hold on to. Well, I'm not dead, and as it turns out, Neither was Mei Yin. In fact, it was her who freed me and insisted we follow Nerva through the portal in the cave. A horrifying scene awaited us. All of Nerva's men lay dead amongst the shards of a mysterious metal, but Nerva's body was missing. Forgetting my present company, I suggested a peaceful approach if we encountered them. That earned me one hell of a knockout punch. When I came to, I searched the whole station, but the only signs of Mei Yin and Nerva were a few ounces of dried blood no bodies, and no victor. There, floating outside the window and surrounded by machinery, was the very island that I had been living on, and it too was orbiting high above the earth along with countless other stations just like it. The ecosystem on the island wasn't just curated, it was completely artificial from the ground up. What in the hell is all this? Why would anyone construct it, and how could they have possibly kept it hidden from the world? I don't have the answers to any of these questions or the dozens of others that keep popping into my head, but somehow, I mean to find out. Somehow I'll find the truth.